I wanted today to share some ideas for safer banking and uh, where altruism becomes like a credit score. And first, let me explain why I'm here. I am a recovering Wall Street lawyer <laughs> and Hong Kong merchant banker. And as a result of pushing New York City, as Jim said, to invest in a composite digital map of itself that was delivered six months before 9-11, I found myself in the aftermath um, at the mayor's emergency command center. And there I watched as New Yorkers helped instead of sabotaged each other. And I wondered, you know, why did it take uh, 3,000 lives, two big buildings, and 19 terrorists to create the post-disaster altruism, to see the benefit from the gifts that each New Yorker could give each other. And um, as a bond lawyer, I thought about a quality of life credit rating and where each person's impact to help their fellows could be a good score. Um, and then I also realized that the terrorists were not random and they had chosen to target global financial centers because of the impacts that globalization, energy politics, and financial, the financial system itself were causing to their homelands. So if we minimize those kinds of banking impacts, perhaps New York and other cities like it that were financial homes uh, could become safer and we could improve our homeland security and theirs at the same time. So that moment has led me to this. And it seems that banks are mirrors of who we are and what we value. Like all mirrors, banks aren't as we imagined them and don't treat us as we would like to be seen. And we see banks as arrogant, bland, unsafe, archaic, useless, immune, distorting, deceitful, unfair, greedy, evil, and untrustworthy. But we need banks to be modest, activist, safe, innovative, useful, responsive, transparent, honest, fair, generous, kind, and trustworthy. And then I've wondered, are we turning into what we see banks as? And could a bank help us be, do, and feel a better us? Banks deal in all of our personality types and have bankers and employees with personalities just like us. A bank is like a Rubik's Cube of personalities constantly spinning itself and us. When World War II began, a young Isabel Myers imagined people would rather understand than destroy each other. And she saw Americans taking jobs out of patriotism, but sacrificing personal values as the price of contributing their gifts. She created what became the Myers-Briggs personality type indicator built as a combination of four pairs of um, personality, personal learning styles. Her work benefited in part from the psychological testing data that was provided by the personnel manager of the First Pennsylvania Bank in Philadelphia to better vet candidates for useful careers in banking. While all personality types exist in society, they are not evenly distributed. The personality types are not evenly distributed so that we have more of those who inspect and judge than we do who invent and redesign. While bankers come from the average distribution of personality types, the banking industry attracts, retains, and promotes specific personality types in greater proportion. This means that bankers in traditional banks do not and are not 
inclined to be agile enough to respond to the full range of life cycle challenges that their customers and the bank itself feel, especially in periods of rapid change and technology innovation as we are witnessing. And the gaps open opportunities for other market participants, the stock market, the venture capitalists, the crowdfunding platforms, to allow those personality types to fund and invest to play a significant invisible role. And since banks deal with different cultures, the personalities common in one culture may be partially missing or even uh, never represented in banker monocultures. So we have personality types, and our bankers have the same but a different mix of personality types. These differences play out in real life. What happens every day when you bank? The bankers um, see us navigate our life cycle events, finding a first job, getting married and divorced, having kids, buying a house, getting a second and a third job, starting and closing a business, getting healthy, facing a health challenge, and so on. Bankers watch us navigate all of these challenges with our tools, including our individual personalities. The ones that point us to the options we know and that hide the ones we don't yet know. Ironically, bankers seem to think that using fear is good for them. Try forgetting to pay a credit card or a mortgage bill for a month. Fear and the credit scores used to quantify the consequences of non-payment as fear are horrible bank collateral. A person not repaying their bills isn't better able or willing to do so by being hounded by bill collectors. Instead, the person may need and deserve help getting a job, even connecting with a bank customer, hiring people just like that person. As the 2008 credit crisis showed, banks that traffic in fear and pile debt on those unable to pay ultimately break apart or sell the customer debt for pennies on the dollar. This same cycle is repeating in the microfinance micro world at the bottom of the pyramid. So can you imagine, after massive taxpayer bailouts, we still have banks today preying on the notion that fear is good collateral and that maximizing fear of life cycle challenges is profitable justifying bankers who impose late fees and lend more to unaffordably high interest borrowers. Can you imagine that some Sand Hill Road VCs consider consumer finance startups that skim the subprime markets for college loans or other activities as social fintech investing, as if that's good for the borrower or society? I am seeing a different way for banks to behave, a safer way, as Albert Einstein said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Life is constantly throwing us life cycle events, conditioning us to twist ourselves as a Rubik's cube to solve the next puzzle even faster, reaching out for help as and when needed to the extent we know. But in today's economic reality, life cycle events are more complex, and the failure to solve them quickly creates greater consequences for parents and children. Bank profits, banks profit by changing the game, that monthly date for paying your credit card, or the teaser rate on the new line of credit, or that adjustable rate mortgage that you took out in the pre-recessionary economy before your jobs changed. You can overcome any obstacle and keep paying the bank, is their refrain. Preying on your rugged individualism as an American pioneer like John Wayne. The media and Hollywood celebrate our rugged individualism as a form of capitalist ideal, suggesting if we each depended more on ourselves than each other, we could successfully navigate any life cycle event whether of our choosing or not. 
but in truth, few of our personality types fit the model of rugged individualist, and fewer of us can be considered entirely self-made as successes or failures. In looking at how bankers treat customers, I began to ask whether we really need to think of ourselves as islands, alone, shivering against the onslaught of monthly bills and special notices from bankers and credit card issuers. It became obvious that we are a network of resources for helping each other, but the normal commercial bank in the U.S. seems to frustrate us acting to help each other, passively watching and profiting from our isolation without mutual aid. I call our abilities and affinities for knowing how to help each other adjacencies. Nature and genetics distributed adjacencies inside our societies for us to teach and rescue each other as some of us learn about, say, health challenges as a children as a child, so that we can teach others who are facing health challenges later in life. So what would a bank look like that let customers and bankers use their natural adjacencies? The bank would deal more in information than in money and be a trusted knowledge transfer hub, a KTH, for people seeking and offering help in managing life cycle events. Not all of us know how to make fire on a desert island. I haven't figured that one out. That was Tom Hanks' character's challenge in the movie Cast Away. Clearly, one person's success in thriving through a traumatic event can be shared as success for others. Here's how I picture a bank of, as a knowledge transfer hub, even pooling life cycle challenges of multiple bank customers to get a better price on a new car or invest in job skills retraining for customers caught in a rapidly changing labor market. Unlike fear, altruism is real collateral. Collateral that keeps people and the bank that represents its people afloat, safe during good economic times and bad. Banks are now competing to show us their values and how they live those values in practice. Values transparent banks may be safer and more profitable. The Global Alliance for Banking on Values research suggests that values-based banks seem to have proportionately fewer bad loans because the loans are investing in the real economy rather than in the securitized and hedged abstractions of the real economy. One final word on the role of using simplicity and complexity in, design, in designing banks. Again, each of our personality types differs in handling complex tasks under pressure. One of our most brilliant complex thinkers, Einstein, cherished speaking of simplicity's role. The significant problems we face cannot be solved by the same level of thinking that created them. If you can't explain it simply, you didn't understand it well enough. If you want to live a happy and full life, tie it to a goal, not just people and things. Great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. Now, if you thought banker there, it was okay. Um, now, more than ever, banking should be simple and even fun. What with mobile apps, as the banker and the bank, and online stock trading in the palm of your hand. Now more than ever, banking should be simple and even fun, and this is what it would look like to solve a Rubik's Cube of your financial life. Our banks handle six actions in three time frames, short term, longer term, and indefinite. We save and spend now, we invest and borrow over a longer period of time. We insure and donate to protect against the unknown likelihood of a life cycle event, of a car accident, a home burglary, medical need, unemployment, disability, death. And if we didn't claim on that insurance last year, we made a donation to someone who did. Today, I focused on the subjective personality elements that differentiate us 
Now consider that each action in, in how we bank impacts the quality of life in a region that we care about or should care about. When a bank shows us our impacts objectively, scientifically, the feedback focuses our attention on the regions we care about, the people there, the species there, the conditions there. When the bank uses our subjective motivations to objectively improve outcomes for ourselves and our neighbors, we make the bank safer and ourselves safer. That's bank transparency of a much higher order and a purpose than we have today. At Stanford University, I am designing a high transparency impacts aware banking model for rewarding uh, ourselves or altruism where the six basic bank functions are simplified and wrapped in a much more meaningful set of feedback loops, keeping our attention and intention together. In that banking model, the adjacencies that each of us possess as gifts earn scores for the impacts that, that we create at the regional quality of life level. In order to develop and test this form of banking, I'm working to create a teaching hospital bank, good bank, and to couple that with a sustainable banking program and hopefully an institute at Stanford that develops the metrics and the incentive rewards for customers and bankers alike to focus on solving life cycle challenges. This spring semester, I organized with Professor Michael Lethick in engineering a sustainable banking seminar. The speakers were amazing and energized how we engineer, how we can think about engineering sustainable banks that leverage human personality types and our adjacencies. And this was 10 weeks of folk. Life rehearses us to help ourselves and others. Banks can knit us together in community. We need banks that do this. Thank you.